What is going on with parts today? Nothing good, I can tell you that. Let's get started. So this video is kind of like a cautionary tale for those of you who are also probably experiencing some problems with parts. And it's also to inform some of you what you can expect to experience with parts today. This is Leo's 82 Corvette. It's been here for a while. He also owns the Mercia Lago that's sitting over there. This is a family heirloom. It's been in the family a long time. He wants to get it back on the road. We're like 80 or 90% done. All we have left is to dial in the cruise control and we're fighting with parts as well on that. Actually, Danielson has a part that I'll show you here in a minute on, an, on the Audi. You guys remember the black Audi that's back running? He has it running perfect. He's trying to just dial in the last little bits and he's not having very good luck because of the parts situation. A lot of you commented in various other videos, quit buying Chinese parts. I don't specifically choose a country of manufacturer. All I choose is whether it be AutoZone, O'Reilly's, CarQuest, Napa, it doesn't matter who, bumper to bumper. Any of them are pretty much getting all their parts from the same rebuilders or makers or what or not. And it's pretty much all you have to work with for the most part. There are some specialty places online that offer better parts or OEM original parts, but they're not going to be 80 bucks. They're going to be probably 800 bucks because they know what they got. No lowball. I've got comments at times when doing estimates. Why is this so much or why does that cost so much with the parts prices? And it's because I try not to buy the bottom of the barrel, cheapest stuff that you find on Amazon or something. But I also try not to buy, the, like I just mentioned, the specialty places that charge triple and quadruple. I kind of try to go in the middle where we get good quality, but a fair price as well. But even when you attempt to do that, you still can get stuck replacing parts two and three times. Because brand new out of the box, things can be bad. I've heard it many times where a customer has done their own work, they've replaced a part, it didn't fix the problem, and they're like, I don't want to go any further. I'll just bring it to the car wizard or bring it to the shop and get it looked at. And we find out that the part that they replaced is still the problem. And their response is, it's brand new out of the box. That's impossible. Not today. It is very, very possible. Brand new out of the box parts are no good. They actually can be worse than the one that you took off, the old one. That's definitely been the story on this Corvette. We've had four or five different parts, I'll show you guys, that I've had to take them off two or three times because brand new out of the box, all I got was junk. So I didn't have to go very far to get to the first failure, which is right here, the caliper on the driver's front. Here's the old one here, it was leaking through the pistons here. It's like, all right, you know what? Let's just get an entire uh, caliper and call it good. If you look in this video right here, you can see that brand new out of the box, a shiny brand new caliper, wasn't even assembled right. We took it off, ordered a second one, it came in and did the same thing again. Now, I want to give you a little bit more information. The second one we got from a different company, a different parts store, completely different parts store. Same problem. So that tells me that the parts are coming from a central location, no matter who you buy them from. Finally, I realized this is probably a good caliper. It's just this one step in the procedure they're doing wrong. So I told Danielson, I gave him the okay, split it apart. It's probably just a bad O-ring, and it was. They were cut O-rings. Whoever's assembling these, wherever they're at, they're putting them together and cutting the O-ring. We put new O-rings on it, reassembled it. It works great. No leaks, good strong brakes. This is an older car, and the problem is, is where are you going to find brand new factory parts for an 82 Corvette? You're not. And even if you found a box from the 80s and said, look, this one's brand new, I'm not putting it on this car because it's been sitting for 30, 30 some odd years. Which means all the seals, all the O-rings, everything on it are dried and compromised. Which will have to be rebuilt again. So brand new is not an option. The next failure, is actually still in the brake system was the master cylinder. We actually went through three before I finally told Danielson pull it apart. I ordered a rebuild kit 
Whatever umbrella seals or things they were using inside of there were very poor quality and they were tearing very easily. Here's the one that's currently working. It works very well. That was the third one we put on that would actually get a good firm brake pedal, but it would slowly lose pressure as long as you kept holding it. I told Daniel Sun, I was like, look, just pull the, the piston out, pull everything all apart, and let's see what's going on in here. We got a new seal kit, new umbrella seals. Everything was smooth. The bore was good inside of it. We put it back together, and it, it works perfect. It works very, very well. It's just really strange how I'm having to rebuild somebody else's rebuild in order that I can have a happy customer and try to make it safe for them. So that's really, really crazy. The next one is the cruise control transducer, which is this little guy here. This is actually the, uh, I'll go ahead and take this off. It is the vacuum solenoid, which is also bad. I've got one of those on order as well. But this is the transducer. It has two speedometer cables that come in. One comes in from the transmission. The other one goes out to the sp actual speedometer head. This is how the cruise control on the older vehicles tell how fast you're going and able to maintain speed. This one's bad. I went through three other ones from various other parts stores and they wouldn't even turn on, they wouldn't even do anything. They were dead out of the box. Finally, I found a place online actually called Cruise Masters. So we initially tested this one, just kind of set it in there and we can tell it's going to work. It's good. But the thing is, this is, this is a good part. I'm glad because I don't have to keep doing this. I finally found a company that sells good parts for these, for this older car. But this thing was not 80 or 90 bucks. It was almost 400 bucks. I actually had to call Leo and said, hey man, this is bad. The only trustworthy part that I can find is going to be this one from Cruise Masters. But this $400, is this okay? Is this what you want to do for your car? And he said, yes, I want my cruise working. So I approve that. Let's go ahead and do that. $400. We're still not done. I'm waiting on a new vacuum valve here, a solenoid. Which brings us to the next part, which is also part of the cruise control. This entire system was compromised. The whole cruise control was messed up. And Leo knew it was from in the past, even years ago, they knew the cruise control was pretty much bricked. It was bad. Let's head on into the interior. This is another issue Danielson's had to take apart a few times, or actually the cruise stock is bad, the wiring and stuff inside of this switch is bad. I've ordered a couple of them from different parts stores, and we just test them even before installing them. And the switch isn't even good, even right out of the box. Finally, I found another company online that sells the stock. I think it was like a hundred bucks. But this one works, we've tested all the switches, everything actually works finally now Danielson's going to go ahead and take this all apart and replace it but this is the third one so some of you are saying i know the next thing is going to be something with the crossfire injection crossfire no it's not that actually this crossfire system works flawlessly it works very well it starts right up we haven't really had to do anything to that it's been everything else all these little accessory pieces and whatnot so we have actually a story on the Audi. I mentioned Danielson had a struggle where he ordered a part for it and it failed miserably. Let's head on over there. You guys have probably seen the video on this Q5. This is the send it to the junkyard Audi where the customer said, I put enough money into this car. I'm not putting a dime more, please junk it. And it, go, actually the link is in the description below. You can go rewatch that video if, or watch it for the first time if you haven't watched it already. It's a very interesting story, and I worked it in a way that everyone involved was happy. Danielson has fixed it. It's completely running and driving again, although thousands of dollars later. But he, there was one final thing he wanted to fix was the actual sunshade on the sunroof, and it's been a battle. Let's take a look. So you can see a bunch of panels and everything laying there on the seat backs. He's got a lot of parts so he could get up there to the sunroof and remove the sunshade. It's supposed to open and close electrically so you can keep the sun out of your eyes if you don't want it in your face. The old one was broken and he bought a new one online, I'm not sure where. So this is what's left of the new one. Wherever he bought it, he got a really good deal on it 
and he was hoping this would be the solution. I'm not sure if it's where he got it, but it did say no returns. He was like, whatever, I just want to get this fixed so it's working again. And he got everything hooked up, and when he went to operate it, it just, it just went to crap. It almost broke the motor and everything inside of there. He was so angry, he knew he couldn't return it. It said clearly no returns. As you can see, he, uh, he bent it in half and threw it in the trash. After some of the stress he's had on the Corvette and various other cars with bad parts, this is what it resulted in. And I'm happy he did it on this broken part and not a customer's vehicle because, and really it didn't hurt anything. It was already a piece of junk anyways, but obviously he would never do this to a customer's vehicle. This is his personal money, his personal project. This, I don't care what he does on that. He would never do this on any other vehicle, but I can understand his frustration. I totally get it. And I don't fault him for doing this. Many of you would do the same after you just spent your hard earned money and you got a piece of junk. You'd be like, I'm done. He spent an hour and a half trying to get that going only for it to just get even worse than what he started with. You just need to be careful when you're buying parts. This video is for you guys out there. Really research what you're buying, where it's coming from, and make sure sometimes the bottom of the barrel say, oh, that one's 10 bucks cheaper, I'll go with that one. And it may be end up where you probably will be thinking, I wish I would have spent a little bit more money. So the cheapest part you can buy is not always the answer. Sometimes it can be a curse. I actually attempted that with Mrs. Wizard's Maserati Levante. The compressor went bad electrically. Mechanically it was still fine, but electrically it was bad. I called AMH Exotics and said, what is a new compressor going to cost? He said, a thousand dollars just for the compressor. I was like, I wonder if I can get something cheaper. So I found one online. I don't remember where I got it from, but it was probably $400. And I thought, well, there we go. That'll probably get it going. It's, there was nothing wrong mechanically. I just need the electrical part to be fixed. And when it arrived, it wouldn't even turn on. It was as bad as the old one. The only thing that kept me out of the doghouse in that situation, it was wintertime. She didn't need the AC really to stay cool. So we were able to wait. I went ahead and plunked down the cash for the full thousand dollar one and it's working perfectly today. The old one got returned, but we lost time and it cost a lot of frustration. Did we really save any money? No. So as I mentioned, most of the parts in the shop we try to buy middle level. Unless the customer specifies, I want the best, I want the top, I'm willing to pay for it, then we go all out. But we try not to buy the cheapest as well because that can go the other direction really fast. This is a situation that could be faced with any of these cars you see in the shop. And like I mentioned, this is just a video to make you guys aware. It may be worth your while, especially an electrical part, to just kind of test it out before you install it because a lot of stores, if, if you install it, they will not allow you to return it. So check it out, make sure it's good to go. Everything's hunky-dory before you actually install the part. And if it checks out good, you can go ahead and put it on. But I've, I definitely have done that lately where we get brand new parts and I say, hey, let's inspect this and check it out before we put it on. It's kind of sad, but that's just the name of the game today. And unfortunately, there are times, just like with that brake caliper, you really don't know what you got until you finally install it, try to bleed it, and test it with pressure. So I find out, oh, it's no good. It's leaking out of the seam. It was a bummer. We got it fixed. It's taken care of, luckily. But again, check your parts, even though when they're brand new in the box, just like we've had people in the past, it's impossible. It's brand new. It can't be broken. Yes, it can. In today's world, we know things aren't made as quality as they used to be. So it's kind of a bummer. If you're curious what kind of tools we use in the shop to fix all these cars, check our Amazon affiliates link in the description below. We get a small cut and really appreciate it. And make sure to hit the subscribe button because there's many, many cool videos to come. Thanks for watching.